Hi, how you doing? Good, I hope. I started uh, studying sociology and I checked out a book at this library here who has finally banned me. I think it was sociology that uh, made me nervous. But uh, it's uh, Introduction to Sociology by Henry L. Tischler. And actually that's a school book. A college school book. Of, uh, I'll read to you what it says about him. Henry L. Tischler was born in Shanghai, China and grew up in Philadelphia. He received his bachelor's degree from Temple University and his master's and doctorate degree from Northeastern University. He pursued postdoctoral studies at Harvard University. His first venture into textbook publishing took place while he was still a graduate student in sociology when he wrote the fourth edition of Race and Ethnic Relations with Bruton Berry. The success of that book led to his authorship of 10 editions of Introduction to Sociology. Tischler has been a professor at Framingham State College in Framingham, Massachusetts for more than the three decades. He has also taught at Northeastern University, Tufts University, and Montclair State University. He continues to teach introductory sociology every year and has been instrumental in encouraging many students to major in the field. His other areas of interest are crime and deviant behavior and race and ethnic necessity. Professor Tischler <clears throat> has been active in making sociological, sociology accessible to the general population and hosting an author interview program on national public radio. He has also written a weekly newspaper column called Society Today, which dealt with a wide variety of sociology, sociological so topics. Tischler divides his time between Boston and New York City with his wife Linda, a senior writer at a national magazine. The Tischlers are parents to Melissa, a business strategy consultant, and Ben, ben a film producer. Okay, <clears throat> this section I wanted to read you is just like a page. Uh, it's called Assimilation. And I was just wondering what other people thought of it besides me. In 1753, 23 years before he signed the Declaration of Independence, Benjamin Franklin wondered about the costs and benefits of German immigration. On one hand, he commented, that Germans are the most stupid and great disorders may one day arise among us because of these immigrants. Yet, on the other hand, he pointed out that they contribute greatly to the improvement of a country. He finally decided that the benefits of German immigration could outweigh the costs if we distribute them more equally, mix them with English, establish English schools where they are now too thick settled. Majoris, 1999. Franklin was concerned with the assimilation of the German immigrants. Assimilation is the process whereby groups with different cultures come to have a common culture. It refers to more than just dress or language, including less tangible items such as values, sentiments, and attitudes. Assimilation is really referring to the fusion of cultural heritages. Assimilation is the integration of new elements with old ones. Transferring culture, culture from one group to another is a highly complex process, often involving the rejection of ancient ideologies, habits, customs, attitudes, and language. It also includes the elusive problem of selection of the many possibilities presented by a culture, which ones will another culture adopt? <clears throat> Why did some Native Americans, for example, when they were confronted with the white civilization, take avidly to guns, horses, rum, knives, and glass beads, 
while showing no interest in certain other features to which whites themselves attach the highest value. In the process of assimilation, one society sets the pattern because of the give and take of culture seems never to operate on a 50-50 basis. Invariably, one group has a much larger role in the process than the other, and various factors interact to make it so. Usually, one of the societies enjoys greater power or prestige than the other, giving it an advantage in the assimilation process. One is better suited to the environment than the other, or one has a greater numerical strength than the other. Thus, the pattern for the United States was set by the British colonists, and to, the pat to that pattern has often been referred to as an Anglo-conformity. The renunciation of the ancestral values or ancestral cultures in favor of the Anglo American behavior and values. Barry and Tischler, 1978, Gordon, 1964. The Anglo conformity viewpoint was at its strongest around World War I, as demonstrated by this excerpt from a speech by President Woodrow Wilson. You cannot dedicate yourself to America unless you become in every respect and with every purpose of your will through Americans. You cannot become thorough Americans if you think of yourselves in groups. America does not consist of groups. A man who thinks of himself as belonging to a particular national group in America has not yet become an American, and the man who goes among you to trade upon your nationality is no worthy son to live under the stars and stripes. Wilson, 1915. For a further discussion of assimilation and Anglo-conformity, see our diverse society. Will English continue to be the language of the United States? Although assimilation frequently has been a professed political goal in the United States, it has seldom been fully achieved. Consider the case of the Native Americans. In 1924, they were granted full U.S. citizenship. Nevertheless, the federal government's policies regarding the integration of Native Americans into American society wavered back and forth until the Hoover Commission Report of 1946 became the guideline for all subsequent administrations. The report stated that a program for the Indian peoples must include progressive measures for their complete integration into the mass of the population as full tax-paying members of the largest society, <coughs> larger society, young employable Indians and the better cultured families should be encouraged and assisted to leave the reservations and set themselves up on the land or in business. Shepherdson, 1963. However, to this day, Native American groups have not, have yet to be fully integrated into the mainstream of American life. About 54% live on or near reservations and most of the rest live in impoverished urban areas. In addition, many Native Americans who left the reservation for greater opportunities in the cities are returning to the reservation. Despite the economic and lifestyle hardships they face on the reservation, their ethnic pride overrides any desire to assimilate. Other groups, whether or not by choice also have not assimilated. The Amish, for instance, have steadfastly maintained their subculture in the face of the pressures of Anglo-conformity from the larger American society. China provides an interesting example of what might be called reverse assimilation. Usually, defeated minority groups are assimilated into the culture of a politically dominant group. In the 17th century, however, Mongol invaders conquered China and installed themselves as rulers. The Mongols were nomadic pastoralists. They were so impressed with the advanced achievements of the Chinese civilization that they gave up their own ways and took on the trappings of Chinese culture, language, manners, dress, and philosophy. During their rule, the Mongols fully assimilated the Chinese culture. And that's pretty much why I care not for 
the culture of Mexico that is growing big here. However, there is a couple of points in this book that uh, I don't entirely agree with. I'm not a sociologist, but uh, since he's from the upper level of the elites, I, I'm i pretty sure it's because he can't understand really poor people very well. You yeah, only study a few, but hey, if the extraterrestrial people have been studying this for God knows how long, ever since we man can't, mankind came around on this earth, they probably know us better than any of us will ever know ourselves. Maybe perhaps it's time for a deep reflection on us all individually and as a group and as a nation. Let's think about it. Have a nice one, day or night, wherever you are. Later.